can Blender do this kind of tessellation on any surface, a random tessellate whether it's parametric or organic shape, and is it easy? It kinda is once you know the basic of it, so in this video, let us go around some of the basic ideas similar to those shapes. We did also made on the channel similar tutorials regarding parametric shapes and mesh deformation, so if you are interested in this, make sure to watch them, the links are in the description, and let us roll with this video. Imagine this box as a building's exterior shell, and you need to make some kind of cut or tessellation on it, we usually start by adding some subdivisions on the mesh, so in edit mode, select the faces and hit subdivide, then add to it the number of cuts you need, 10 is good for this one, now Blender has a very cool add-on that is shipped with it, enable it first, we will need it here. We might also mention that this add-on had some changes around the Blender 3.0 version, where they shifted the options around so people got lost with it, I am on Blender 3.3 now so you might get your Blender upgraded to the latest version, once we enable the add-on, we can find the settings in the side panel, so hit N to open it. The option we will use first is the dual mesh, and similar to it is the convert to dual mesh under it, the difference between them is one distractive to the main mesh and the other is not. Here you can choose the source faces whether it's squad or tries, and although the option available, it doesn't seem to work its best with the quads, as in this mesh we have, if we hit OK. The generated hexagon faces are somehow messed up, which in some cases might be cool and can give you awesome shapes, however if we want a more symmetric look, we need to use triangulated ones, and an easy fix for that is to poke the faces in the main mesh before using the dual mesh option, and you can see with the poke faces, each one is now of 4 triangles, and if we use the add-on again, we get this kind of tessellation of the surface which is cool for me especially if you continue working on it with other commands like insets and extrusions, also boolean can help you make the cuts for the entrance area. So that's one simple thing you can do with it. Another idea we can make is with the tessellate button, so let me switch to a new cube, and try to add any other shape from the mesh menu, a torus for example, I won't even do any changes on it, and let us move it near the main mesh. Subdivide the cube like the previous one cause this step is essential, and let us select both their shapes then hit tessellate. If we just leave the tessellate on the default settings, it will give us something like this, where it spread the torus on each face of the main mesh, and that alone is awesome. We can also go back on another round and maybe change the fill mode to something else, and that will change the result to the shape you see now, where it spread four toruses on each face similar to the poke we made. You can go with those just with bevel or even use the cast modifier on the entire new mesh. This can open the door to many ideas for buildings fronts or structure covering. Let us again move on to a new mesh. This time after subdividing it, we will use the collapse option in the decimate modifier to give it more scattery random cuts and by changing the collapse ratio here to any number of cuts, then top it over with the dual mesh button, it can result with some interesting shapes. And again we can work on this with couple commands to shape it toward the inside, or outside, or deform it in any way or form.
a bevel on this would look nice for sure, and this basic result can work as a wall or a floor for your medieval scene that you've been working on since last year. This add-on have a quite number of options that you can go through from wireframe, to lattice deforming, and other options which shifts depending on the view mode you on, so if we switch to edit mode, a new options will appear related to that mode, and also with the weight paint, which has some weird settings in it still cool to work with, like those math formulas which you can play with and can affect the shapes once you add it as an info vertex group and we will see that in a minute. Now on a new mesh that is already subdivide, I'm repeating the process just to keep it beginners friendly, cause really that's what matters, once you get your hand on the basics, the complexity can be achieved fast, so back to this mesh, I will add on it the decimators before, and decrease the collapse ratio till we reach a nice result, we can also add on this a vertex weight proximity modifier, and let me set it over the decimate. With the weight proximity we need two things, first is a vertices group, and we get that by assigning all the mesh vertices to a new group which we can add from this tab. The second thing we need is an object, any object whether it's a sphere, torus, cylinder, or anything in mind, this will work as a center to affect the weight on the vertices group, so once we add both the group and the sphere in the proximity modifier, we can switch to the weight paint mode to see the effect. Make sure to put the proximity mode on geometry, then you have couple of settings that's adjustable according to what you have in mind from geometry options to paint distance and fallout, all that can be changed. Once you settle on paint like this, we need to get back to object mode, and to make this weight paint affect the decimate and any other modifier we add, we need to assign the same vertex group in it, so let us do that and see what happens, adjusting the ratio again or even the subdivision on any part of the mesh will give us more results to work on. We can after that add a wireframe modifier on it, with those settings we need to check boundaries since we have loose edges on top and bottom, we can also add the same vertex group here which in result affect the thickness on the wires. On top of all that let us add a subdivision surface modifier, make the level on 3 or 4 to give it a smooth look, a more organic shape, just pay attention to the mesh poly count before you add the last modifier if you have a low end device, cause sometimes it can make blender heavy. We can finish that by adding some extra thickness with the solidify modifier, 
and it also give you the option to make it relative to the vertex group we made, this form is changeable by any of the factors we added whether by playing with the collapse or the thickness, it will change the final result you have, and again those are just a starting ideas so we still haven't touched any command which can take this to a new level, and that's it, don't forget to like this video if you still here, and see you guys next time, stay sharp, goodbye.